Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again in today's video. An entitled neighbor stole my semi-truck, claiming that her kid deserves a ride in it. She ends up crashing it into my house and I called the police and pressed charges. Here is what happened, let's dive right into the story. I live in a small neighborhood in Eastern Europe and I've been here with my family since I was born. It used to be a nice quiet place, but things have changed about half a decade ago when the Karens rolled into town. You know the classic Karens, the ones who think they run the place just because they are whiter than toothpaste. We've got about four of these Karens in our neighborhood now and it's been a real headache for all of us. It's like they all showed up at the same time as if they were telepathically connected to wreak havoc in our peaceful neighborhood. These Karens did not just saunter into the town though, they practically stormed in waving their self-proclaimed authority like a flag. First there was Karen number one. She came in like a hurricane barking at anyone whose grass was a smidge too long. As if she had a PhD in lawn aesthetics. She would even scold you for the slightest weed daring to grow into your garden. Then came Karen number two, who would corner you during your evening stroll and lecture you on how to properly leash your dog. She even started circulating pamphlets on pet etiquette in our mailboxes and wrote absolute junk on it, as if she had taken it directly from Facebook. Karen number three seemed to have supersonic hearing, able to detect a pin drop from a mile away. Her shrill voice became a familiar sound as she complained about the neighborhood kids playing in the park, cats meowing for treats and the leaf blower. Yes, she complained about the leaf blower being too loud, the same one that she also uses. Talk about logic. And finally there's Karen number four who was convinced that she was the keeper of our mailboxes and she would scrutinize your mail, giving us unasked advice of how we should paint our mailboxes and how our subscriptions to some of the local supermarkets was not so called good organic choices. Karen number one had a child who was nearly as loud and entitled as she was. You see, I owned a semi truck because my job required it and ever since the first time I drove it out her kid had been absolutely fascinated by it. Now it would be cute and it would be wholesome if the kid did not insist on making a dash for my semi truck every time it rolled into the neighborhood. But understanding the word no was not in his vocabulary and I could not entirely blame him for that because it was all Karen's doing. Every time the kid spotted my semi truck he would shout with joy and then he would make a beeline for it, ignoring my warnings that it could be dangerous. It was hard to believe how relentless this little guy could be. He would scream at the top of his lungs in a tone that could shatter glass, insisting that he wanted to ride on my semi truck. No amount of telling him no seemed to register, it was a semi truck not a toy that I could simply give him. There were times when he would throw a full blown tantrum right on my driveway, lying on the ground and demanding access to my semi my truck. I could not help but think that he believed he could get his way because he would always smirk when I stepped off the semi truck only to then start screaming again when I point my hose at him. Only then would Karen number one finally come out of her house accusing me of assaulting her precious child and threatening to sue me. She never actually followed through on that promise but the kid continued to make occasional appearances throwing the same tantrum. One time he even tried to sneak onto the semi truck and I had to physically drag him away. When that happened Karen number one and I had a heated argument that ended with a warning from my side. I told her that if I ever saw her bread near my semi truck again she would be having police on her doorstep step. Other Karens interfered and tried to make me see how wrong I was but I simply ignored them. But I had a feeling that Karen number one was jealous of my semi truck and would not stop at anything to have her bread in it. So before that could happen I decided to take matters to the police. I explained everything to them about the relentless harassment from Karen number one and her out of control child. The police acknowledged my complaint but admitted that it wasn't a big enough case to launch a full investigation. However they promised to pay a visit to Karen number one and give her a warning about her actions. One day a few weeks after I drove off to drop my parents at my sister's house it was a routine trip or so I thought. When I returned home I was met with a horrifying sight. My semi truck had crashed into my own house. I could not believe my eyes and screamed in disbelief. I saw my neighbor approaching me and I asked what the hell happened. He told me that he had heard commotion outside and he rushed to see what was going on. 
To his shock, he saw Karen number one behind the wheel of my semi-truck with her little brat hopping around inside. It was clear that Karen had no clue how to control the massive vehicle and her child was only making matters worse with his antics. Before my neighbor could even think of doing anything, he saw how before his own eyes the Karen crashed my semi-truck into my own house. I was beyond furious and immediately called the police giving them a rundown of the event before asking them to come over quick. Quickly. By the time the police arrived at the scene, I noticed another car quickly leaving Karen number one's house. I pointed to the retreating vehicle, signaling to the officers that Karen might be attempting to escape. Thankfully, they acted quickly and caught her before she could run away from the scene. This resulted in Karen shouting at the police officers, accusing them of trying to harm her and her child. She started being dramatic and attempting to shift the blame away from herself. However, the police were not easily swayed. They took her into custody and carefully assessed the entire situation. They questioned my neighbor who provided a first-hand account of the events leading up to the crash, backing up my story. Moreover, I showed them the CCTV footage I had managed to retrieve which captured the entire incident. Even with all the evidence stacked against her, the Karen was still trying to change the whole narrative and paint me as the villain who was always trying to get her arrested because I hated her. However, the evidence was clear and solid, leaving no room for doubt. At the police station, Karen was subjected to a thorough interrogation. After about an hour, she finally admitted to being behind the wheel of my semi-truck during the crash. However, she claimed that I had personally given her the keys and permission to drive my semi-truck, so she was not in the wrong. So then the police decided to review my CCTV footage from an hour before the crash. The footage showed Karen breaking into my home while I was away, making it absolutely clear that it was not me who had handed over my keys to her. I was honestly done with her already and all this just made me believe that this Karen could literally commit crimes to get her way so I made the decision to press charges against her. She had not only broken into my house but had also caused extensive damage to both my property and my semi truck all because she raised her brat wrong and was too freaking entitled to hear no. Karen attempted to put up a fight in court and she hired lawyers to try and flip the case on me. However, the evidence and also the witnesses were pretty clear and no amount of shouting or emotional blackmailing helped her. In the end, the court ruled in my favor and the Karen was ordered to pay $450,000 in damages for all the havoc she had wreaked upon my property and belongings. It was a significant blow to her both financially and reputation-wise. Because apparently this caused conflicts between her and her army husband and she eventually got no help from him anymore, which made her go bankrupt and and she ended up in prison. Finally, one Karen less in the neighborhood. However, ripe stars, if I remember correctly, four Karens moved into the neighborhood, so there are three to go. However, let's hope that the other Karens are not as horrible as this one. However, guys, if you have ever dealt with any entitled neighbors yourself, please feel free to share your own story either in the comments or on r slash ripe stories on Reddit where you can share your own long story. If you have watched until here, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even leave a comment if you want to help me. Thank you so much and now let's continue with the next one. This is a malicious compliance story. For Americans, 50 grams is 1.76 ounces, 200 grams are 7 ounces and 23 kilograms are 50.7 pounds. So when I travel by plane, which happens about 2 out of 3 times per year, I'm usually quite conscious about the weight of my luggage because of how much you have to pay if it exceeds the limit. This time, I put a bit more stuff in because of gifts but I thought I was fine. I pass the police and get to the check-in, where a woman in her late 30s slash early 40s reminded me of my old history teacher, indicated me to proceed. So I give my passport, do the usual stuff and I put my luggage on the scale which shows 23.05 kilogram, the limit being 23. I was quite pleased with myself while looking at it, thinking I got it just right, but no, the woman tells me that I need to pay 50 euros for excess baggage. I look at her confused, telling her it's 50 grams, surely it doesn't matter. She repeats herself and we start arguing until she says, either you pay 50 euros or you somehow make the luggage 50 grams lighter. I did not have a carry-on, so I shouldn't take anything with me. At that moment, I remember the 200 grams of chocolate that are sitting in the luggage and I start smiling. 
I open the luggage, take the chocolate out and start nibbling at it with a grin on my face while looking at the woman who goes from Pikachu face to annoyed. She tells me to hurry up even though I was the only one in line, so I offered her some and she just stared at me. I ended up eating exactly a quarter of the 200 grams and lo and behold the scale showed 23 kilograms. The woman gives me my ticket while glaring at me and I tell her to have a good day. And the next one is a revenge story. So this was in 2017, I worked at a small 36 room condo hotel on Marco Island, Florida and that property was owned by a small venture capitalist firm ran by two wealthy siblings and one of their sons. I was brought on board by a colleague who was hired as the general manager. Since this was a new slash small operation that had pretty much zero actual industry knowledge or expertise, it was basically the GM and myself who were responsible for bringing in real changes to the property, while also wearing multiple hats and doing the job of several roles with our industry experience. There was only one other office employee who was a curmudgingly old lady, ironically her name was actually Karen, who basically just did the billing for unit owners and sat in the back when she could. I myself was responsible for not only the day-to-day -day front desk presence, phone presence, concierge presence, assigning daily housekeeping duties and running a brief night audit, but most importantly also managing the business revenue strategy and competitive set and online room inventory with our own website and major OTA companies like Expedia, Booking, Trivago, etc. 2017 was a record year for us and my revenue strategy earned the company several tens of thousands of dollars more than previous years by comparison. Then crap starts slowly hitting the fan in quarter 2 to 3. My colleague the GM resigned due to personal issues completely unrelated to his work performance that brought the office staff down to two people which was Karen and I. Well Karen had this month long trip to Italy planned like two years in advance so she was going to go regardless. Karen flies out in the midst of the news that there's a bad hurricane a few days out from landfall, Q Hurricane Irma. For those unaware of hurricane grading, Irma made landfall in the US as a category 4 that is staggering powerful, for reference Katrina, which devastated New Orleans in 2005, was also a category 4. Needless to say, everyone was on high alert and made plans to evacuate. During my evacuation, not on the clock or being paid by the company whatsoever, the firm's accountant called me on my personal phone asking me to walk her through the steps of how to remotely run the property management systems audit. With hotel computer systems, the day does not actually end until you tell the system that the day is over and that it is time to run reports and tally up the numbers so if no one is there to do the audit, the hotel will permanently be stuck on the previous day. I spent about two hours on the phone with her while evacuating from a natural disaster and I was never compensated for it. Irma ended up making landfall on the island I worked on and the entire surrounding area lost power for about a week. We all returned to devastation, some of our rooms on the top floor having their walls and roof blown out and slowly trying to pick the pieces back up. My hours were cut from 40 per week to about 16 per week as the damage from the hurricane drove business way down. I was beginning to struggle financially and I was forced to use all my PTO and vacation days I had earned up to this point to keep full paychecks coming in as I was was just some single 24 to 25 year old guy who lived alone and the company offered absolutely zero roadmap for getting back to full time compensation. I sent the CEO who I spoke with every week in revenue meetings an email explaining the situation and asking for a possible advance to make ends meet for the time being. The email I got back was basically one sentence to the effect of OP we will be open again soon thanks. Bold strategy, let's see how that plays out for you considering I'm the literal only person running the hotel operations right now. Within a week I secured an interview for a better paying job closer to home, I crushed the interview and kept it completely to myself. The CEO's brother, the CFO had flown down to be on the property for the first day of the reopening where business started to come back to normal. The day before the reopening while in the office I got a call from HR at the new company confirming the job offer and to stop by later that day to finalize everything. I called the CFO and asked him to come down to the office because I wanted to talk. The second he got there and he asked what is up. I told him I was resigning effective immediately. Him, OP you realize that will make it hard for us to open tomorrow right? Me, nothing personal, just like your company has financial concerns that prevent you from keeping your only employee here to run the hotel. 
I also have financial concerns that prevent me from staying here as I have bills to pay. You will be open again soon, don't worry. He gritted his teeth and said, okay then. I handed over my key to the property, got in my car and never looked back. And the next one is an MIDA whole story. I, 35 male, have been married to my wife, 32 female, for 7 years. We have two children together, 6 male and 3 female. She takes care of the house, babysits the kids most of the time, because she is a stay-at-home mom, but we evenly split the chores and childcare on weekends and when I get home from work. My wife is much more social than I am, we moved to her home state from mine because she wanted to be closer to her parents and her childhood friends. Now she is a lot more social than I am and she goes on 3-4 girl trips a year. I have no issues with that and I'm happy to babysit the kids full time in her absence, I'm more of a homebody anyway, so I usually like to just paint in the spare room or play video games every once in a while instead of traveling out of state. I don't really take time off work also unless we do something as a family. For the past 3-4 months I was very busy on a major project at work. I've been working 60 hour weeks and frankly I'm exhausted with the stress. So when the project was finally coming to an end I told my wife that I'm taking a day off and I won't be doing any work around the house. Of course I would still clean up after myself, but I did not want to do any chores or childcare on that one day. I told her that two weeks in advance and she agreed, I also reminded her three days before. However, when that day came, my wife forgot about our agreement. I was in the painting room and my wife interrupted me, telling me that she needed me to give our daughter a bath because she spilled milk all over herself and couldn't do it because she had to wash the dishes. It was annoying but whatever, crap happens. Later on when I was playing video games, my wife tells me our son needs help for his math homework. I ask her why she cannot help him herself and she said it's because she has some work to do. This work was actually her best friend coming over and chatting for an hour. This really pissed me off so after I helped my son and the best friend left, I told my wife that I'm leaving the house for 4-5 to five hours. She asked me where I was going, I told her I'm just gonna chill in the park and do whatever. But then she said she needs me to help out with the chores and with the kids. I told her that today was my day off from all work including housework and it's her job to babysit the kids on this day before I left the house. When I came back she was acting cold and called me an a-hole for just abandoning her and the kids. I think she's being dramatic but when I spoke to my sister she said parenting is a 24-7 job. So Reddit, am I the a-hole? And here ripe stars let me know in the comments what you think about this. Do you think OP is being the a-hole here or not? Comment number one, I'm gonna be downvoted to hell but you all need to hear this. No one can be a parent 24-7, it's just not possible. You do need breaks from time to time, you are only human, you will break before your children do trust me. This community has unrealistic expectations expectations for parents, he just wanted a day to himself. That's all, he's not evil, he's not lazy, he is not a deadbeat dad. He is just tired. Now my judgment depends on if you give your wife a day to unwind herself too. She also needs days off from being a parent from time to time. If you don't let her, then you are the a-hole. And by the way, ripe stars, I think that OP mentioned in the beginning that the wife frequently, or at least a couple of times per year, goes on these girl traps and surely OP takes care of the kids when that happens. So clearly OP is giving the wife this time to unwind herself that this person talked about. However, it seems like that the wife is not giving the same time to her husband. It almost feels like she expects him to work 24-7 and not have any downtime. Anyway, comment number two, this subreddit loves to crap on husbands who work themselves to the ground and still are expected to do equal share of chores at home when their wives are stay-at-home moms. Not the a-hole, this is absolutely unfair to you. Enough of this BS, honestly, if he works 60 hours per week, he needs some rest so he can go back to the grind and the least she can do is not expect him to do 50-50 when he is around. Even worse, he is happy to do it but needed one day once in a blue moon, one effin day. Screw me, where's the equality? Comment number three, not the a-hole. I've had similar experiences other than the term babysitting, which I assume due to language differences, you communicated it clearly and she didn't respect it. If I say to my wife, hey, are you cool if Saturday I just game all day and you watch the kids and she says yes, I assume she's gonna make arrangements to keep the kids occupied, which is not difficult. Also, we are both gamers when Hogwarts Legacy came out, she asked if she could have a weekend just to play it. I took the four kids to the park both days. 
And yeah, ripe stars OP definitely needs to communicate this with his wife because I also feel like that this is not exactly a fair situation. Either way, let me know what you think in the comments. And with this, we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.